just a little assembly trick here. Here we have um, the bottom of our, this is our ball, uh, uh, it goes in the socket here, it clicks in like so. Um, so the trick is here, sometimes the first layer when you're printing tends to be a little bit wider, it's almost like a, a reverse capillary effect that you get on, you know, on a glass of water, how it always rises up to the side, it's almost like uh, the plastic sort of sinks down to the bed uh, when it's printing. So if this is a little tight, you know, it's, it's not quite fitting in, um, what you can do is just really gently heat it. I've got a heat gun here. Um, and you really just want to really gently heat the end. You just want to really, really gently just soften it. You know, that's all it needs. And then that should just be enough just to wiggle. And then you get a really nice tight fit. And as that cools down, it's going to really solidify in that hole and you'll have a really nice tight fitting part. So for assembling your board, first you need your PolyPlus board. So the first thing to do is um, insert the servos into the board. So what we have is our X servo is actually bottom mounted. That means it's mounted from the underneath, whereas our Y servo is mounted from the top. So you'll note here on these um, these Futaba servos, they have a, a little a little uh, angle on here, which is not going to allow you to, to mount it from the bottom. So you need to take a knife and just really, really gently, you can just ease the knife, give it a little wiggle in that way, and then just down from the top. And then on the other side, just repeat the process. So now, now they clear that boy. First thing to do is mount the servo. So, no, here are our holes for our um, sockets. They're going to sit on here. So the the, the servo, um, the, the pivot of the servo wants to line up behind on the X. So that goes in there. You want to take your M3 bolts, M3 by 10. And then just pop the uh, M3 nut on the other side. So just quickly tighten, tighten that up, just finger tight. The uh, hole in the in the board will hold the servo tightly. Next to go is our Y servo. So, uh, once again, actually this time, the Y wants to go through the board. So there's a small notch that uh, is designed into the board. This is to allow for the Y, so it means you can't get this one the wrong way around. And then just gently ease the, uh, ease the servo through the board. So once you have your servos mounted in your board, uh, next thing to do is to pop your bolts through. These are the bolts that are going to be holding the pivot arms. So first we'll start with the, um, the Y at the back. So it's quite, quite a tight fit here actually, so you might need to just, um, just wind it through and it'll sort of cut its own thread as it goes through the board. But there's no harm done there. And then you want to pop an M4 nut 
on the top, and that's going to secure it down. And then we'll do that up. The next thing to do is we want to pop another M4 nut on top. And what that's going to do is it's going to, it's going to float and it's going to be the height adjustment. So to match the height of the servo across this plane, we want the, uh, the, the bearing and the servo to be running on, on the same axis. So you just use this nut to adjust the height and then we'll pop another one on later to uh, lock it in. Next one going through. We'll lock that one down as well, and same as with the Y, pop the little floating nut on there. Great. So, once you have that done, pop that to one side. The next thing to do, actually, one more, we'll pop the, the, the sockets on there. So the sockets can go straight on. So these are the uh, M3 by, I'd say M3 by 12, if you have it. I've, I'm using M3 by 20, just um, what was available to me, but uh, 12 will be long enough if you can get it. And then second one. Going on there, and then that is the last of our M3. Okay, so this is our board completely set up now. All that's missing is um, eyes, conrods, couplings, and uh, pivots. So the way to set the eyes up, so what I've done here is these are just the, um, the M2 bolts, really short, and uh, they've actually cut their own thread through. So I've just wound those down. Um, if you can get a nut on the back, then do it. Uh, it's not essential. Um, so what you want to do is set up two eyes. So the couplings. These are uh, designed to be a friction uh, fit, so because of the polyflex, you know, it expands just onto there and you can just sort of twist it down and then make sure it really locks right down to the end. And once that's on there, that's not going, that's not going anywhere. And then what you want to do is, is link the eyes all together, so you want the, the whole X, so you see these ones just push on it. and just push straight down. And then again, with the Y. Probably being a bit stubborn. Try this side. Give those a little twist on if you can. And this is why you have to do this step first. Because once the uh, balls are locked into the sockets, you just don't get the play and the movement that you need. So now we have what is effectively our setup. So all we need to do now is just link the two together, uh, bolt the um, servo arm extension onto the servos, the pivots onto the board, and then just click the balls into the sockets. Ah, actually, one more thing to do. Remember to zero your servos. So what I've done here, just plug the servos in so they'll find their natural centre. And you have a trim here, so you want to move your trim to the, to the middle. Uh, and what that does, it makes minor adjustments to the servos in their resting position. So you want your servos in the resting position, so then you can set up your whole eye mat, get your eyes looking straight forward, 
Uh, otherwise, you can set it up and turn it on and they'll just go all cross-eyed. So, that's done. You can unplug those now. So next on, the servo uh, arm that comes with the servo. So I know the way that I want to set it up is in a perpendicular to the board. small screws that they come with the servo they actually screw down right into the, the nylon gear in the top of the servo so now we have our two servo arm extensions nicely secured down onto our original servos. So the next thing to do is just really gently, so just watch out here, so while you've still got a bit of flex in the, in the rig, you want to just pop that eye into the, the socket, pop the ball into the socket. Yep, and then you can go ahead and just align these pivots here. So now, the, uh, the nut that we put on before the M4 nut, we're just going to adjust this slightly to make some minor adjustments just so this conrad is running at the same level as our servo here. And then once we're happy, we'll just pop a lock nut on the top there, another M4 lock nut. And then same with the other side. Okay, that looks good. lock that off and then you can make some real fine adjustments just to make sure the eyes are exactly the same just by just easing in the couplings either in or out just a tiny bit just to make sure the eyes are starting at absolute zero and there we have it so let's just borrow the legs so I've included these legs they're just a, a basic little design a little clip just to hold the board, just to elevate the servo, so you can just play around with it uh, a bit more freely. So they just pop on the side. So now we plug, I'm going to plug the, the X into channel 1, which is going to be a left and right, on, on my uh, controller anyway. And the so we see now the servos have kicked in and they're already centred off. That's why we do the centering process first. So my trim is all good and now we can start playing with the rig.